All right, thank you for the nice introduction and also thank you for inviting me to be here with you today and thank you for coming to my dog talk, although there is beautiful weather outside. So I'll be talking a little bit about some past and more recent work of, of mine that has to do with um, the effect of hydrology and season on carbon and nutrient fluxes and also about the stoichiometry. So, um, we heard before already that inland waters are very important uh, components of the global carbon cycle as the carbon and nutrient cycling, I should say, as they actively process uh, carbon and nutrients, which can result in emissions of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere or in burial or in export fluxes downstream that may be altered depending on the processing. So I'm a little bit focused on understanding the factors that control these fluxes and also exploring how these fluxes change into, in a changing environment. So we know that the hydrology actually uh, impacts export fluxes from catchments, it, the composition of dissolved organic matter, and therefore also the bioavailability to heterotrophic metabolism. Now, we were asking the question uh, a little to understand a little bit better the sources of dissolved organic matter and nutrients, how they change in varying seasons, what are the dynamics across, for example, day and night events or um, events like storms or extended base flow periods, all things that could, uh, could come with uh, global changes, climatic changes. So, and uh, so we were wondering how discharge and season modulates the export and retention in streams and lakes. Um, how exactly do storms affect the export fluxes and also affect the dissolved organic matter quality that now is transported downstream? And what are the consequences for uh, carbon to nutrient to phosphorus for the stoichiometry? So I would like to start with a little bit of an older work, well, but actually the work for which I was invited here to the, give the spotlight talk. This was done at the University of Vienna with Tom Butter. And we were asking the question, how, hydrology, how does hydrology controls the soft organic matter dynamics across seasons, day, night, and discrete, discrete events like storms and long, longer base flow periods? And for this, we sampled the third order stream, draining a largely pristine catchment in Austria. And we had quite, uh, we had quite a, an intensive sampling design. It was a diurnal sampling design, and it lasted over th three years. We collected a lot of samples for DOC concentration. We looked at the soft organic matter composition using absorbance and fluorescence measures. And we were also interested in how, do, how does the stream and the hyperreic zone interact depending on different events. So this was uh, the article that resulted from this work. It, and we did find that hydrology and also season this, uh, control, the, uh, control the soft organic matter export and composition uh, in the stream and the hyperreic zone. So, what we saw was that we, that the soft organic matter composition varies on a diurnal basis, but also varies on a seasonal basis. Uh, it was largely driven by stream water temperature, photosynthetic active radiation, and discharge. And we saw that uh, summer storms, for example, uh, influence the soft organic matter composition very differently uh, than snow melt, for example, summer storms uh, exported a very humic-like signal uh, and caused a very humic-like signal of, of soft organic matter in the streams, while during sub -peer extended periods of summer low flow, for example, we found that photooxidation of the soft organic matter played a role and caused lower molecular weight uh, molecules in the stream, and that storms would actually decouple um, the stream and the hyperreic zones, uh, zone a bit and uh, cause a large flux of terrestrial organic matter downstream. So based on this, we were actually able to calculate that export fluxes, as you can see here, of not only the soft organic matter, but also of the individual components of the quality. So we were able to calculate how much 
um, more humic-like the soft organic matter was transported downstream and how much more protein organic matter was transported downstream. But actually this raised um, more questions and this is where I, actually, where I would like to tell you about what I'm currently working on and that is how do these, how does hydrology and season now actually control not only the soft organic matter export, but how does it affect the ratio of the of carbon and nutrients? And not only in streams, but also in lakes. So this is important because we know that uh, stoichiometry also controls ecosystem metabolism. So we were so we set up, uh, so we were actually lucky to work with a very big data set here. And this was now done at Trent University with Maggie Sinopoulos in um, Canada, in Ontario. And we are looking here at our, at our study, um, at the map. We looked at two lakes uh, with, which were, which had um, like, uh, 11 inflows to outflows, so in all in all we studied 13 streams and we had really long time series. We had like 35 years, a little more, of nearly weekly sampling data of DOC, total nitrogen, total phosphorus and discharge. So uh, here is a little example of how this looked like. Um, that you see in blue, the hydrograph just a few years because it's a bit of much data to show, 35 years, so I just took a little example here. And um, we see that um, DOC, sorry, yeah, DOC concentration in blue and in uh, pink and black, the total phosphorus and total nitrogen concentration. And you can already see that uh, events have a big impact on these concentrations. They seem to deplete the soils and the phosphorus and nitrogen the concentrations in the stream decrease. So now if we look at the stoichiometry, we, see and we notice the next thing. We actually notice that also smaller events in high frequency seem to have a large effect on the stoichiometry and seem to change this. So we tried to model this and looked at the stoichiometry of all the tributaries at a daily resolution. And you will see here now the day of the year um, versus the discharge. But that's not the whole model. So I wrote the model equation down here and we actually found that the stoichiometry of uh, C to N, C to P and N to P ratios was largely impacted not only by the course of the year but also by hydrological parameters like the discharge of course but also the time since the last high flow event. And uh, we found that there is quite a change throughout the year, for example, with more nitrogen being exported in spring, likely because there is some nitrogen accumulation uh, under the snow cover, which is then flushed with the spring um, snow melt. And then there is a stronger signal of uh, there is more phosphorus relative to carbon in the stream in summer, while in autumn we see again more carbon likely caused by uh, litter, litter fall. So we see that very clearly uh, throughout the year, there seems to be throughout the year and with events. Uh, if you look at this, with rising discharge, of course, it impacts the stoichiometry a lot. There seem to be, uh, the stoichiometry seems to vary a lot. Now, if we look a little bit at the bigger picture of this and actually model the catchment export fluxes. So these are not now the measurements on a daily basis, but these are really the modeled export fluxes and the stoichiometry of the yearly export fluxes. Mm -hmm. We see that factors like the flooding frequency and the flood duration matter a lot for the export fluxes. And especially in the smaller streams, high flood frequency leads to a quick depletion of phosphorus and nitrogen. And we can also see that flood duration and flood frequency interact uh, to, to determine the nitrogen to phosphorus ratio. And uh, at high flood duration and high flood frequency, we see that phosphorus is depleted relative to nitrogen. So we see that these factors, all which are impacted by climatic changes, actually really shift the C2N2P stoichiometry. 
Now, arriving at the lakes, so I said before these streams are, are uh, tributaries to a lake, to lakes, to two lakes, the Key Lake and Harp Lake. Um, we actually see that also the lakes um, process, uh, of course, carbon, uh, carbon and the nutrients, and we see that they uh, uh, impact and shift the stoichiometric ratios. So they mainly take, uh, they mainly retain and process carbon and phosphorus, and thereby changing a lot um, the ratios that are then in the outflows. So now the question is, what impacts how the lakes process the nutrients? And so we are actually starting to look into this. So this is ongoing work right now, so I'm always happy also for your ideas and thoughts on this. We just started here with a very simple model uh, with a multiple linear regression. Um, and just having a look at the impact of flood duration, of course flood frequency, but we see that a very large effect on how the lakes process the nutrients uh, comes from the inflowing discharge. So we see here, this is the delta DOC, that's basically inflow minus outflow, uh, same for, for nitrogen and same for phosphorus. And we see that the lakes generally retain, uh, retain um, phosphorus and carbon, um, but the rate at which they retain it depends very much on how much uh, discharge is coming in and on the flood duration and flood frequency. And of course, the rate is not the same for every lake. So they are, they are very, they are for phosphorus, for example, and for nitrogen, there are quite strong differences also between the lakes. Um, interesting to note is that in we would say rather wet years, the lakes act rather as a nitrogen source, while uh, carbon and phosphorus are retained. And also this now is important because these factors like flood duration, flood frequency are also directly linked to climate change. So with this, I hope I could convince you a little bit about the importance of the hydrological regime for not only the soft organic matter composition, but also for stoichiometry, and how it is important to understand these drivers in order to understand how, how uh, stoichiometry and their will change with climatic change, which is important for how our ecosystems work and process uh, organic matter and nutrients. And yeah, with this, I would like to thank all the team members of the teams in Vienna and in Canada who helped with extensive sampling and um, advice and everything. And I would like to thank you for listening. And yeah, maybe there's time for a question. Thank you. <laughs>